I'm taking my cousin with me. I kind of hate taking my cousin to these events because he's single and he fancy someone and then they think I'm his girlfriend then I have to be like no I'm not his girlfriend then they start talking then I get left and it's like what is the point of inviting him to these events stay tuned and see what I get up to my channel um i'm just about to get ready because i'm going out i'm going to gauchos and i'm going to the basically i don't know how to say it so i'm going for that um and i'm gonna taste some wine i know it's from argentina but i'm not really like educated in in wine so um i just know it tastes nice yeah i guess it's going to be quite educational as well as um a nice little treat i'm taking my cousin with me i kind of hate taking my cousin to these events because he's single and he fancies someone and then they think i'm his girlfriend then i have to be like no i'm not his girlfriend then they start talking then i get left and it's like what is the point of inviting him to these events stay tuned and see what i get up to and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. I want to see those subscriptions go up. Come on, stop being stingy with your subscriptions. And if you think this video is of your taste, then give it a thumbs up. If you don't think it's of your taste, then don't give it a thumbs down. Just don't come back to my channel. But um, yeah, let's see what I get up to. I just want to start off with, with the, how, we, how I see it myself and how I come, came across this... Uh, uh, wine director Phil Croze, he's been uh, bringing wines to UK from Argentina since 1999, which was back then something unusual to do. Uh, uh, no one really knew that market very well. Uh, it was emerging. So many wine investors came there and uh, settled, and many international winemakers, like in, in this case as well, uh, went to Argentina to seek for uh, good land, for good soil. They have the climate, they have everything in order to produce great quality wines, but, but what they didn't have is knowledge. And uh, the people like, people from Cheval and ma many other different states across Europe or uh, the United States, they would go down to Argentina and look and search and educate and show them how to do it. And now, uh, Argentina is the fourth largest producer of wine in the world. And it always bounces out fourth or fifth or sixth. So it's always top six. And, and in terms of uh, market share, UK is, is probably the second or, or third most important market after United States and Brazil, uh, and uh, it is astonishing how much Argentine wine we consume here. And, uh, and here in Gaucho, across 14 restaurants, we do sell approximately 350,000 bottles a year, which is all from Argentina, which is insane to, to imagine. And um, and Cheval, uh, where do we rank it? Well, very simple. We have a section on our list, on our final layer, rare list, uh, which is called Super Ten. We also have a section called Super Malbec as well. We just, it sounds really cool. <laughs> super, super and everything. And Super 10 is, is, is very simple. It's 10 wines from Argentina. Iconic wines, game-changing wines. Over the last 17 years, since Phil started that list, uh, that, has, uh, that has just transformed the landscape of Argentine wine, of Argentine fine wine, and something more unique than just a six, seven pound uh, shelf Malbec. So, uh, and, and one of these wines out of these Super 10 wines is, is Cheval Design, which is the blend of uh, Malbec, uh, Cabernet, Merlot, and Petit Verdot, is that right? Yes, there you go. Cabernet and then, yeah, occasionally, there you go. And um, Jack here from Wayne Hennessy, he will uh, uh, explain kind of the behind the label story, how it all came about, because I think, I'm sure some of you know that Cheval is not just a winery in Argentina. It is also a very, very fine and very uh, stark quality estate in Bordeaux, in saint Emilion, in on the uh, right-hand side of the Bordeaux River. Uh, so, uh, Jack, please. Um, so, Gaucho is a hugely important partner for us. It's very, very high, and it makes winemaking quite challenging. Um, but also, there's some benefits from being that high. Uh, they identified this now, after that phylloxera bug affected all of Bordeaux, 
For whatever reason, the Malbec grape was just not regrown. They decided to focus more upon Cabernet Sauvignon, which is of course a great variety. Um, Merlots, you know, were, were, the lead great, were the lead great variety and continue to be today. Now, Pierre Lerton decided that it was essential to kind of re, you know, if we're going to be in Argentina, of course we must use the noble grape variety in Argentina, and Malbec, when it's grown well, even as a single varietal, is exceptional. But it was his decision not to just make a Malbec by itself. He wanted to take his, uh, his intelligence and his experience from Bordeaux and create a blended wine. So he's using, of course, this old vine Malbec, but he's now going to start planting some Cabernet Sauvignon, he's going to plant some Malbec, with the idea of, in the future, creating his New World Grand Cru. The very, very first vintage of Cheval de Zon was in 1999. And the first vintage was a blend only of Malbec and Cabernet Sauvignon. Never commercially released. It was uh, a project, it was bottled, it was exceptional. I've been lucky enough to taste it a few times myself, but it was not a commercial release. So we still have a few bottles in our cellars, which we bring out um, at a tasting every now and then, but um, they're certainly beginning to dwindle in number. Anyway, the results that they got from the 99 were exceptional, and they realized that they had the perfect conditions to make a top, top quality Argentinian wine. Now, there were a number of reasons that they realized that were benefiting them. Firstly, if you think if you're 1,100 meters above sea level, normal things at ground level become difficult. One of the first things is irrigation. How are you going to water your crop? Whereas everything else would be, you know, you plug into a hose pipe in Bordeaux and you settle your water, you, you water by sprinkler, whatever it might be. Actually, in the Andes, it's even easier because you have natural snow. <coughs> so there's no irrigation required. All of the vines are naturally watered by snow melt from the top of the Andes. All you do is you dig something called burrows. So you basically dig burrows along the side of your vineyard. They fill and they naturally irrigate the vines. So this is great. It means it's an even more of a natural process. The other thing you get at altitude is... For any of you who have been um, uh, up a mountain, not something that I enjoy, it's far too much physical exercise, um, but you get big, big swathes in temperatures. Um, and in the wine world, that's referred to as thermal amplitude. Thermal amplitude is the difference between the lowest temperature of the day and the highest temperature of the day. And that can swing quite drastically. The sun rays are higher, the UV rays are higher, so it's perfect, perfect wine growing conditions, particularly for something like Malbec and Cabernet Sauvignon, which are thick skin grapes. If you had a very delicate grape like Pinot Noir at 1100 meters, which is quite a thin skinned grape, the sun's rays would be too much for it, that they might pierce, they might break, or the photosynthesis process might just shut down and they would stop ripening. The Cabernet Sauvignon and the, and the, and the Malbec grapes have a thick enough skin to cope with it. Uh, first and foremost, the heat of the day, but also let's say it could hit 28, 29, sometimes 30 degrees in the summer, it's sometimes even a bit more but with ultra high UV, so it's feeling even warmer. But then, once the, once the wind starts to blow over the top of the mountains in the evening, it can drop much, much beneath that. So you could have a swing in temperature of one day of 30 degrees. You could be zero at midnight, and you could be 30 degrees at midday, which is, which is a huge spread of temperature, but the grapes uh, perform very, very well in these conditions. So the barrels in the same storage time, or? Um, that changes a little bit from vintage to vintage. But almost, almost. Yeah, Cuvier yeah. Alexandre. Yeah, 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 that's right. So it was. Um, yeah. Good no, I, I yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've been fortunate as well to get my hands on some. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I think I'm going to leave the vlog here. Um, but it was one of the most educational wine tastings I've ever been at. They actually broke it down and talked to you through everything. Um, and I see you in my next video. And remember, guys, to always stay bougie.